I'm Pete Friedman, and this is the Wheaton Municipal Band. Please welcome, now beginning his 40th season, Dr. Bruce Moss. Hello, I'm Pete Friedman. Welcome to the final installment of our special online videos from the Wheaton Municipal Band. This year has been unlike any we've ever seen. It has not been easy for any of us, but we've found ways to carry on with our lives and we've learned to adapt to our new reality. And the band has adapted too. We're using this new technology to stay in touch and to present new programming that we hope will add to your appreciation and enjoyment of the Wheaton Municipal Band. Please stay tuned at the end of this video for a special message. And now, concluding his 41st season as music director and conductor of the Wheaton Municipal Band, Dr. Bruce Moss. We hope you enjoy this final webisode. And through this, we've learned that we will uh, continue to promote many things online, but we know that there is no substitute for live music for you actually being there and being right in the thick of it. This is what makes performing music for live audiences special. And if I may be so bold, almost nothing can replicate that experience. We love all the audio and all of the technology and the way things can look good through the technology and sound good through the technology. Jessica Seleski has done a wonderful job producing these videos and she asked me to provide some commentary as we open the last show. And she said, you know, you and Pete Friedman provide such a wonderful contrast to one another. Pete is so prepared and polished and you're so, and I said, so what, Jessica, what? And she said, I don't know, but it's the perfect contrast to Pete. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing, remove your, your hats, hat. and join us in singing as Dr. Moss leads us in our national anthem.
Do besides being a band teacher, well, I, I, I play in this band in Wheaton all the summer, and it's, it's so it's yeah, it's I couldn't imagine to summer without. To perform perfectly on the spot, and that's fun. And the people are wonderful. The people are supportive. I started meeting a lot of friends, and I started playing lots of different music. Um, that was just really exciting to me. The audience is, is the reason why I show up every week. Um, it's because it's because yeah, I so I love these people. I think in many ways that's what makes music so valuable is that it really, in some ways, takes everything that we are as people and, and manifests itself into something that we can physically see. What these people are as people. <laughs> I've got, got to stop on that one. It's what everybody is as a person. Gail Sanken and I've been with the Wheaton Municipal Band for about 13 years. I play the oboe and the English horn. Uh, dear friend, um, my right hand. She is a hard worker. Gail is willing to tell the truth regardless of what everybody else is saying. She always has ideas. She's always like, her brain is moving. But she volunteers to do things and she follows through. Oh, she does. Which is really, yes. really important. She has been with the band for a very long time. In the 1970s when I joined the band, I had just graduated um, with my master's in oboe and English horn performance. And then I got a job and we were starting a family and so I stopped playing for a long time. And then when my kids grew up and I decided I wanted to come back to playing, I thought Wheat Municipal Band would be perfect. So I was thrilled that I made it. And the second year when I made it to make tenure, I was doubly thrilled, and so I've been a member ever since. Gail Sonken is a, 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 a resident of Wheaton. Being a Wheaton resident, she offers a perspective 
on the band and its place in Wheaton that none of us can. She's a dedicated and loyal member. We couldn't make, this, make smart decisions and we couldn't be able to do some of the things we do without her input because she, she knows what's happening in Wheaton. What's challenging with the band and being on the band board is we are part of the brainstorming process. Uh, we help come up with the programs for the summer. And I love that. I love that creative banter. So one of the suggestions I had was to do Dancing Under the Stars. And this was just when dancing took off on TV. And so I suggested that we have a dance studio come out, teach a dance lesson, and then we play the appropriate music and then the audience members can come up and dance. It and then it, the weather was perfect and Dr. Moss wasn't there. That was one of his weeks he was gone. So the next year we did it again and Dr. Moss was there and he turned around and watched how wonderful the reception was and he goes, this is fabulous, but we already knew it because we had done it the year before. So I was thrilled that an idea that I had that I could make happen, created magic in the park, and it was great. The loss of music is, is like a death. It's, it's a grief that it, it, there's nothing that can fill the soul like music can. And not only has the Wheaton Municipal Band experience gone away this summer, but every musical experience that I have has gone away. It is devastating to not have music performance in my life. And it also is interesting because it's hard to motivate myself to practice. You have to do what you have to do in difficult times, and we hope that the music comes back next year, and if it's only a year, I can live with it. Um, it's not forever, and that's what keeps me going. in Edmund Chapel, and usually we have our own dressing rooms. Uh, he was loaned an instrument because there, he didn't bring everything in his repertoire, and uh, um, he was warming up on it, and he happened to be in my dressing room warming up as I was going through my script, and he just started doing some riff, uh, music I had never heard before, and I wanted to turn on my smartphone and start recording. I knew it was illegal, so I didn't, and I thought, I'm getting a private concert by Lulu right here <laughs> and this is just amazing it was fantastic uh, getting to the airport I'm going to come in from Spain this is just day for you said I can't carry all these 
this currency. And I said, well, Gad, you're on the road with James Taylor. He said, yeah, I carry 11 instruments. I said, well, bring them. He said, well, with James Taylor, I have somebody else to carry them around for me. <laughs> Lou Marini, of course, uh, rose to stardom through a couple of venues. He was in the very first Saturday Night Live band. Right. And he became friends and got no, uh, he got noticed by Chevy Chase and uh, Dan Aykroyd and uh, John Belushi. And I had a wonderful time speaking to him about John Belushi and his friendship with John because the Belushi brothers, I don't know if our audience is aware, but they uh, are Wheaton natives. Yeah. Please welcome from New York City. Uh, Lou told me some wonderful stories, but then he went on uh, to play this role with Aretha Franklin in the original Blues Brothers movie, which came out, incidentally, about the time that I met Pete Friedman. Why do I remember that? Because I was working with the Northwestern Marching Band. I'd taken a sabbatical, and I remember them doing a show to the Blues Brothers movie. It was such a hit back in the early 80s. And Lou had a role in that uh, with a song called Think yep. that was sung by Aretha Franklin. Yeah, a great number in that movie. And he told me the last time he was here last summer, he said, yeah, the last time I saw Aretha, because she had recently passed away, she was getting out of a limo and I was backstage to do some type of performance with her and she had on these sunglasses and she pulled them down and looked at me and said, Blue Loop. <laughs> is a tradition. 
people look forward to it. It's part of their summer and they can't wait for the concerts to begin. They get their lawn chairs ready, their picnic baskets out, and they come to the concerts. They bring their children, their grandchildren. Um, it's a family event, and it is a tradition passed on from generation to generation. I'm Pete Friedman, and this is the Wheaton Municipal Band. It's like life slows down on Thursday nights in the in the in the summer. It's just it's a slice of Americana. It's being outside, listening to live live music, live performance with your friends, your neighbors. There's not a lot of those things left. And so it's I think it's just important that we try to just hold on to that because they're starting to become fewer and far between. And I just I would never I would I hate to see that the atmosphere and the interaction and just sort of the communal nature of making music for your community ever go away. I think that's what makes Wheaton Municipal Band specifically so powerful and, and it's such a treasure because the community around them value them so much. And even if you went to, the, to the, all the individual ba and band members and said, why do you think Wheaton Band is so awesome or so cool or why did you want to be a part of it? Regardless of what they say first, they'll always end up saying, well, it's because of Wheaton, and because Wheaton really supports us, and, and the folks who are in this town want us to keep going. There's different experiences every year in the music that we play, and you, I guess it's through music, you have deepening relationships by playing with each other. I, frankly, we're all looking forward to just being together. Uh, the, the, the 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 bond of just the Wheaton band members. I mean, we haven't seen each other. It's so good to make music with people and also be able to uh, um, connect with them on a personal level. I'm very much looking forward to obviously the new shell, and I'm looking forward to when we can play together again. look at the uh, at the folks who are in the band you've got a wide range of, of ages uh, who are in it you've got folks who are in it for their first year in their early 20s actually there's even people in the late teens who are in it and you've got folks who have been in the July 4th parade for 50 years and everything in between in our horn section 45 years I think in many ways that's what makes music so valuable is that it really in some ways takes everything that we are as people and, and manifests itself into something that we can physically see or hear. I can't substitute it for anything and I'm very hopeful and looking forward to next summer when we get to be back together and, um, and get to play. It's, it's now a part of my life that, that cannot be uh, substituted. I just, I need it.
I'm Bruce Moss, and we thank you so much for being with us throughout the summer with these web series. We've certainly missed you, and we've missed performing for you. But we look forward to next summer, when we will bring you the opening of a new band show, a new fanfare commissioned for the premiere of that show, many soloists and guests, and of course, the wonderful Wheaton Municipal Band. We are looking forward to making the music. We are looking forward to having you a part of the season and for you to be with us in the newly renovated Memorial Park in Wheaton. I would like to thank many people. First of all, the Park District uh, for their support of the band and the, the new shell that we are going to be performing in soon. The City of Wheaton, the Band Commission, Mayor Cease, the Friends of the Wheaton Municipal Band, all the officers and board of the band, and for sure, the members of the Wheaton Municipal Band who perform for you each week, whom I have missed so much this summer, and we have missed getting together and being able to prepare concerts for you. But as I said, we look forward to a new season. We look forward to an exciting season the band's 92nd, my 42nd, Pete Friedman's 40th, and many, many more things that will be fun and exciting. You can be a part of it, and we are still here, and we will be with you next summer. Count on it. Thank you for joining us for the final webisode of the Wheaton Municipal Band's 2020 season video series. We hope you enjoyed it. Even though we had to cancel our in-person concerts this summer due to COVID-19, we're still here. Each week, through the magic of the internet, we've brought you a new webisode. We hope you've enjoyed insights into the history of the band, great moments from past performances, band member profiles, and brand new performances. We'd like to thank everyone involved in making this video series possible. Most of their names and credits appear at the beginning of each video, but we appreciate the many other individuals who gave of their time and efforts. Special thanks go to Jessica Seletsky, who pulled together the entire project for us, conducted and recorded all of the interviews, and edited together every minute, every second of the video in this series. Viewed back to back, that's almost three hours of new programming. We're also deeply grateful to all of the healthcare workers and first responders who are working to save lives and to keep us healthy, and to all essential workers who have risked their own safety in order to provide services to everyone. Our hearts go out to everyone who has suffered financial hardship during this crisis, to those who have suffered illness, and to those who have lost friends and loved ones. We miss you, we're thinking about you, and we're thinking especially of our audience members most at risk in nursing homes and other living arrangements who have been separated from their friends and loved ones. We have not forgotten any of you. We're looking forward to 2021 and seeing you again when it's safe. Until then, on behalf of the entire Wheaton Municipal Band and Dr. Bruce Moss, I'm Pete Friedman.